Hello, YouTubers. So my daughter calls me at the beginning of the week to tell me that she got in a little fender bender, is how she describes it. And I asked her if the car was dripping any fluid. She said no. Uh, is it making any noise? She said no. Well, turns out I go over to her job to switch cars so that I can drive the damaged car back home after inspecting it. And uh, it appears there's just this hole in the bumper. But things are worse than they seem. So upon further inspection, so we can see through here what happened. There was a, she bumped into a, the rear end of a truck that had a big hitch in the back. And that hitch went right through the bumper cover, right into this bumper reinforcement bracket, bent it like a wire hanger into the condenser, causing a leak with the coolant for the air conditioning system also bent and cracked the radiator in addition to pushing it into the engine bay as you can see here's where the retainer here's where the pin that's supposed to fit over here is so it got pushed all the way back in up against the alternator and that's where it stopped the fans are rubbing and the radiator is cracked I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this thing apart and see what other damage I find. I suspect there's going to be uh, some plastic pieces I'm going to have to change. And also the hood does not close properly because as you can see, along with the bent reinforcement bracket, the T-bar that goes down from this radiator support, the bar that goes down, is also bent. Another thing that is going to have to be replaced. Anyhow, let me go ahead and pull this thing apart and we'll uh, see what needs to be ordered. Okay, this is what we got. The bumper uh, reinforcement brace is uh, bent in in such a way that it will not come out. What I'm going to have to do to relieve the stress is cut it down here that way I can get this one spot off guys so that part's off you can see this this uh this t-bar here that attaches the upper and lower radiator support brackets is bent in that's the reason the hood doesn't latch anymore so this is gonna this is gonna have to be taken off and then this bent back and uh hopefully i can rebend this power steering cooler back into its uh close to its original position and uh hopefully without uh, cracking it all right i'm gonna pause the video here and uh take some more of this stuff apart and we'll be right back the next thing i'm going to take off is the radiator support bracket the upper one along with the t-bar that you see there in the picture that's bent towards the condenser so i'm going to pull that off real quick and uh 
see if there's any salvaging that part. Got that thing off and it looks like this little bracket here may need to be bent back this way and uh, this one is bent way out so this one's also gonna have to be bent back this way I gotta bend that one back this way All right, and then that should take care of that part the next thing would be draining or removing the air conditioning um, condenser and the draining the fluid out of the radiator and its removal. Both of them are cracked. All right, this is what I'm gonna to try to do. I'm gonna to try, to, to try to use this, which is pretty big, to bend that, that piece back. We'll see if this works out for me. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see that, but I think uh, once I get this nut off, I'm trying to get this nut off. I'll put you guys back down. So there you have it. All right. Uh, went ahead and took the radiator and the condenser out. Um, so this is this is this is what the engine bay looks like without that top radiator bracket that was bent, plus the radiator and the condenser removed. As you can see, you got the upper inner uh, the upper radiator hose here. Those are the one that comes off the top part where the cap goes. And then the bottom hose that uh, goes to the bottom of the radiator. Now, interestingly enough, this car, the thermostat is on the other end of this hose, the lower hose. On many of the cars that I've worked on in the past, the thermostat would be 
uh, on the end of this hose. But in this case, this car is not that way. It's uh, actually back here. I'm going to try to see if maybe you guys can see it. So that is kind of a hard thing to show you here. But this, here it is right here. So this, this thing right here, this is where the uh, thermostat is under here. But this is the other end of the radiator hose, the lower one. I'm going to have to take the battery out, take this air box out along with the throttle body tubing. I'm going to take all that apart and uh, we should have a clear shot of that thermostat. There's a couple of screws here that have to come off to get to this bottom screw on this air box. So this, this is the car's computer. So this has to come off. So there's a screw here. And then you gotta pull this little thing out. This used to be this used to be slid in there, covering the screws that you need to get to. So you gotta push that little plastic tab down and then slide this up and out of the way. And then if you can see down there, there's two 12 millimeter bolts that need to come off. I'm going to go ahead and set the camera back on the tripod and take those bolts out and pull this computer away to expose that last bolt. Right, guys that's what it looks like without the air box and uh, there's still a couple of things here that are still in the way this wire loom here this is a little fastener here you gotta pull it this way and then pull up that pulls that thing off so now that thing is free and then there are the uh, the bolts that hold it on so I'm gonna go ahead and Pull that thing off, give you guys a better look. All right, I'm back. I got the two the two bolts off. So it's one on the top and then one on the bottom. The piece fits just like this. Make sure that you don't lose these little screws that are here, these little bolts that are here, because they hold on these little metal brackets that these uh, th these little pins attach to. So make sure not to lose those. What I like to do as I'm taking things apart is I'll thread the the bolts or, or nuts that go with it back on the part so long as they're not in the way and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that thermostat out you can see it right there it has a uh, little rubber 
grommet around it that we can get to. So I'm going to pull this thing out of the way to get it out of the way here. And then I'm going to pull this guy out of here. All you got to do is just grab it and just wiggle it out and it should should come out. If, it's, if it doesn't come out, you can grab it with a with a plier or something because we're going to replace it anyway. So it doesn't matter if we damage this this piece here. See, just like that. Guys, and the reason I'm replacing this is because this car overheated several times on the way here. And sometimes these things, they get... Uh, they get stuck in the open position. In this case, it was not, but I'm going to go ahead as a precaution and replace the thing anyway. The new gasket's in around the thermostat. And then, so this thing has a, like a little uh, groove cut out into this rubber ring. And this metal that's around the edges of this thermostat fit into that groove. And then when you're going to, Put it back inside of the engine you just have to take a little bit of care to make sure that as you're pushing it in because it's it seems like the gasket is a little bit wider than the um the the circumference of this and the radius of this uh actually the diameter of this little part here and it it's kind of it fits kind of loose so you just have to Make sure that you start it on one side and kind of just be, be patient and work it in to make sure that this thing still stays inside the groove and that this fits all the way flush. Now the only thing left is to put the the uh, this piece back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over here and see what I can do. I'm trying to film this with one hand, guys. I apologize about the shaky video. So this, this thing is just going to fit right over here so now all I'm gonna do now is put the bolts on and then tighten it up and then since this little rubber sticks out this is what's gonna form the seal once I tighten the bolts down it's not gonna leak any water from here all right let me go ahead and do that and I'll turn the video back on once it's finished there are the bolts put back into their positions and these bolts this one and the one below it, which you can't see. Let me see if I can get a shot of it. Maybe you can see it this way. That's not gonna work. Maybe you can see it. Let's see here. Uh, there's the there's the bottom one. You can barely see it. It's kind of difficult to see. The camera's not focusing. But anyhow, both those bolts get tightened up to. 10 foot pounds. Anytime uh, you're tightening steel to aluminum, unless it's uh, some little bracket or something like this, that's not that big of a deal. But this kind of stuff that has to create seals, I always like torquing them to spec. In this particular car, it's 10 foot pounds. Let me go ahead and tighten those things back up and we'll continue. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the air box, put that thing back together, and uh, then start working on replacing the radiator and getting this car back together.
All right, so this is what we got. So these are the new parts. We got the radiator, all of these items, by the way, I get from Rock Auto. They are not a sponsor, but they do have a wide selection and very good price. I mean, excellent. Recommend them highly if you don't have a good part source already. Along with the parts that need to be replaced, I need to replace the condenser as well. As you guys know, my uh, daughter got into a little uh, fender bender and a trailer hitch came right through the front bumper cover and damaged the radiator, you can see, and the condenser. So both condenser and the radiator. So here's the condenser here in the front. See, see, you can see that. There's a condenser in the front and then the radiator directly behind it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put these two sections together, button up the fan shroud, and uh, install it in the car. I got the radiator, the condenser, and the fan shroud along with the upper bracket that ties it all down installed in the car looks real good give you guys a shot over here Let's see if I can get out of my own shadow there's a shot of what it looks like now everything's hooked up I went ahead and started it the car starts it doesn't uh, overheat anymore so that's good next thing would be the uh, the bumper so this one came from carparts.com uh, they uh, delivered it, it was folded. It's really interesting how they deliver the bumper. The bumper is essentially folded in the box, similar to a, a napkin that's folded uh, three ways. That way it reduces the shipping cost significantly. The dealer wanted $158 just for shipping on the part and uh, bumper cover was very expensive. These guys that had the bumper cover for $77 and it was about uh, 50 bucks for shipping. That's the bumper cover along with the pan over here so you guys can see. So these are all the, the, the messed up parts over here. And then this is the new bumper reinforcement bar which is going to go on next. Let me go ahead and set the tripod uh, up. That way you guys can watch me do that. Okay little update on this uh, bumper reinforcement bracket for a 2007 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS the one with the 2.4 liter engine I would imagine this part is going to be the same even on the uh, six cylinder version the brackets that are spot welded to the frame also bent in so now these bolts won't align 100%. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and open it up a little bit this way, open this one a little bit up more this way, and then on the other side I'm going to do the uh, the same thing. I'm going to open this up a little bit more this way and this a little bit more this way. That way it gives me a little room to move it side to side. That way I can line up those bolts and, and put this part back on. All right, I wanted to give you an update here. The original hole is about one and one eighth inch wide. And I already, I already hit this one a little bit and it's currently uh, just about one and a quarter. Just about one and a quarter. That's actually, it's exactly at one and a quarter. So one and a quarter and then this one is one and an eighth. There it is, one and an eighth. What I'm using to do this is a uh, an air Dremel with a carbide tip on it.
All right, there it is all buttoned up. I had to battle with it a little bit and uh, to get those bolts, those nuts on that uh, we had to shift over a little bit so the socket didn't want to go in there, but I was able to get it on. So there it is. Now the next part is this uh, piece of plastic that goes between the bumper cover and this bumper uh, bracket here. It's cracked. That trailer hitch went right through the middle of it and damaged it real bad. I'm going to try to glue this thing back together. This thing, the sole purpose of this is just to take up that space between the bumper cover and this bracket. It's an additional thing that can crumple. I may have to fill it up with some maybe expanding foam and then just trim off whatever's extra. It's going to have the same effect. A lot of the newer cars don't even use this plastic anymore. They're using a piece of uh, foam between the bumper cover and the bumper bracket. So I intend to do something similar to not have to uh, pay to replace this, this part. All right, let's see uh, how it comes out. I'll go ahead and glue it up first and then hit it with the spray foam. This is the plan. I'm going to use some good stuff, spray foam. To join this bumper back together and the reason I have the plastic on it is I don't want the this material to stick to the bumper bracket that's underneath it I want to be able to pull this whole thing off shape it and then go ahead and fasten it somehow to the bumper cover and the bumper bracket good morning YouTube this is day three of the front end repair of a 2007 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS. This is the 2.4 liter four cylinder model and uh, I went ahead and used the great stuff spray foam to fill up this gap on this. So this is uh, where we are with the repair. I'm going to get a little uh, knife and start trimming up this foam and hopefully it will hold together so that I can reuse it instead of having to reorder this part which is about $120. The can of spray foam was five bucks. I'd rather resolve it for five bucks than spend uh, a bunch of extra money for a part that literally gets destroyed every time it gets hit. The current stage that I'm at right now is I'm going to charge the AC system since the condenser was damaged along with the radiator it needed to be replaced. This is the first time I mess around with uh, air conditioning. Uh, I've never done it before but I called around a local shop and they wanted $150 to evacuate the system and charge it with R134A refrigerant. I thought it was kind of high, priced out the cost of the tools and renting the pump, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be saving some money doing it this way. Not to mention I get to learn how to work on this. Uh, so far what I've, what I've uh, figured out based on YouTube videos that I've seen online, along with exploring the service manual for the car, is that uh, you got to have a set of gauges. Um, there's different ones out there. This one is a Harbor Freight version. It's Pittsburgh Automotive is the brand. So here it is right here, Pittsburgh Automotive. What's uh, cool about this gauge is that you have a little viewing window here so you can see what's going on with a refrigerant if you're filling it. That's how you know when you're, you're empty. Another thing also that's important is that it has a little uh, purge valve here that you can use your refrigerant bottle to this line there's going to be air in here and you got to get that air out before you open up these these valves to charge the uh, system you do that by depressing this little uh, valve right here this little stem that sticks out you depress that a little bit with the refrigerant uh, bottle open and then you'll you'll purge a little air out of there and as soon as you see a little refrigerant coming out then you know you're 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 good and you can just recap this 
the previous set of gauges that I picked up did not have this feature and uh, I felt that it was important enough to go ahead and and get the right one that had this one well, this one's got it I'm gonna go ahead and use this one to charge it up there's um, there's two places in the engine compartment that has connectors for this this one is the uh, high side And the high side has a larger diameter uh, coupler or stem that comes out of it. And now this kit, very important, that whatever kit you buy, you make sure you get these adapters. Because without these adapters, there's no way to connect this to this. you got to have this adapter. And the way this adapter looks like is... It looks kind of like an air compressor coupler. You pull this sleeve back, you slide this on top, you let it go, and it locks into place. And then it also has these, these dials here. And what these dials do is they cause that little pin in the middle to come down. And when that pin comes down, it pushes on this pin to open the system, allowing refrigerant to come in, or if you got to evacuate and take refrigerant out, for refrigerant to come out now you can't get these you can't get these mixed up the uh, the high side will only fit on the high side and the low side will only fit on the low side you need to charge this using the uh, low side what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these up right now so all I'm gonna do is pull this little sleeve back push this thing down and make sure it's locked into place and that's that's locked into place right there do the same thing for the other one on this one this one is not marked low side but i know it is the low side so i'm going to go ahead and take this cap off and don't lose these caps make sure you keep these caps so if you notice the diameter of this one is a little bit smaller than the previous one so i'm going to go ahead and connect this one up this one's the one for the low side again pull up on the sleeve push down let it go check to verify that it's locked that one is locked into place, and you're good to go. Now, it's very important that um, you wear safety glasses when you're dealing with refrigerant or high pressure, anything that could uh, hurt you. Gloves, also recommended because the refrigerant can give you uh, severe skin burns. And uh, uh, face something uh, to protect your face. You don't want to be breathing any of this stuff. Not, not to mention it's bad for the... Uh, atmosphere you're not supposed to let this stuff out into the environment if you can help it and again if you're not uh mechanically inclined don't don't do try to do this type of work yourself you're also going to need a vacuum pump this vacuum pump here i rented from autozone you give them a 200 dollars deposit and when you return the pump they give you the the deposit back so there's essentially no cost to renting this pump they do it as a courtesy, and since I buy a lot of products from there anyway, uh, it's good business for them. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... Oh, another thing, too, that you want to do before you open any of these valves, any of these valves, is you want to check your gauges. After you connect up your gauges, what you want to do is turn your vacuum pump on. For example, right now, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and let the... Uh... The vacuum out. All right, I just let the I just let the vacuum out. How, how you want to check these gauges is you you close these valves, right? Turn them to the right, close them, and then what you want to do is you turn your pump on. Turn this pump on. And then while the pump is running, you come over here and you 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 open these you open these valves. And what you'll notice is it'll it'll uh, create a vacuum. And you can hear the pump working when it does this. Okay. Do the same thing on the other side. Open the valve, and it's going to create a vacuum. Now after it's created the vacuum. 
go ahead and close these valves. And then shut your pump off. And then come back in about uh, 15 minutes to see if any of these these uh, indicator markings have moved. So, for example, right now this is thir showing uh, 30 inches of mercury. And this is below zero. About, uh, I'd say about... Uh, Maybe an eighth of an inch away from that little stop pin that's on the gauge. So just pay attention to this and then come back in about 15 minutes and see if they've moved from here, from these positions. If they have not, then you're certain that all of your fittings are on correctly and, and you're not leaking any uh, vacuum. If you're leaking vacuum, this is not gonna, you're not going to be successful doing this. So make sure that this doesn't have any leaks. And that's a good way right before you use these gauges to make sure you don't have any issues. All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, before I get started filling this, one thing that I found out that you need to have is this adapter. You can pick this up at uh, AutoZone. This adapter is important, so make sure that you get it. In my case, this car is going to take 16 ounces of refrigerant to completely fill the system. This can is 12. What I'll do is... Once this can is completely empty, I'm going to switch over to the second can. And uh, you're going to want to have to weigh this can as you're using it so that you can determine that you don't overfill the refrigerant into the system because that could cause damage. One other thing that's important is when you replace major air conditioning components such as the uh, compressor, the condenser, any of those major pieces you're going to want to add some lubricant to the system for this particular job inside the manual the service manual it says if you replace a condenser which is what i did on this car it needs a half of an ounce which is uh, equivalent to 14 grams of this oil now this oil is now, this is for a 2007 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS. This is a low viscosity one. And it's uh, for the PAG 46. What's cool about this particular oil is that it also contains a UV dye. In the event that your AC system will ever uh, develop a leak, this UV dye being in there will help you locate where that leak is coming from. What I did is took this little plastic cup weighed it out on a scale and i'm gonna pour this inside of this yellow hose once i uh, decouple it i'm gonna flip it up facing the hose up and i'm gonna slowly pour this oil into that hose that way as the refrigerant pushes the refrigerant in it'll also take with it this oil to lubricate the system. All right, I connected up the, the bottle of the refrigerant and inside this hose, I dripped that oil with the dye in it. And uh, what you're supposed to do with this after you connect the can, uh, this refrigerant to flow into this hose, you're supposed to purge it by opening up this little thing and pressing it a couple times till the refrigerant comes out however i i did notice that the oil has is is here in the little window i i, I don't think i'm going to push this because if i do i believe that oil is going to come out and i and i need that oil to stay in the system so i'm going to try to charge it the way it is without actually purging it here because i don't think it's uh it's going to be necessary anyway let me go ahead and uh, start the vehicle and we'll get this thing uh charging all right guys the car is running i'm going to go ahead and open up the low side remember you always want to charge from the low side you never want to charge from the high side so let, let's take a look at the gauges when i open it up
I was able to spray foam fuse this bumper absorption material that was originally just a plastic with a bunch of voids in it. As you can see, I just used some spray foam to fill it in and um, just spray painted it black just to make it look a little bit better. It's held on currently with uh, four wire ties and uh, what used to hold it were these clips that would clip into here but uh, these clips all broke off once it uh, got involved in that that accident but this uh, will get sandwiched between the bumper cover and where it's currently positioned and should not fall out uh, should any of those wire ties fail which uh, I don't suspect they will anyhow let me button up the front with the bumper cover and we'll come back to the video in a minute if you're like me and uh, you own old cars, you're always going to be needing these little, these little clips. These clips, they get old, they get brittle, they break. And what I try to do when I can is if I have need for these and they're in a spot where I can't replace this by using a tie wrap, what I do is... I'll, I'll harvest these from another place where I can use a tie wrap. A tie wrap is great for holding plastic together. It, it never comes off. It, it, the way the plastic is, it doesn't degrade as quickly as these do. Um, so I'm going to take these off. And, and then uh, I'll show you guys how I modify this piece to then use the wire ties instead of these. And then I'll use these in another place where I can't get a wire tie. So there's four of them here that I can harvest. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. You can always order them. They sell uh, they sell them in bags. But I'm constantly needing these things. I think what I may wind up doing is just buying a huge bag of them from somewhere. But they're so expensive. You go to AutoZone or O'Reilly's and you're picking up a pack of three or four of them. And, and they want like 12 bucks. It's, it's crazy ridiculous how much money they want for these little plastic pieces. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and repeat those for the rest of them. All right, here you have it. So all of these replaced with uh, wire ties. And now I have four of these that I can use somewhere else. Uh, one perfect example would be right here. So this section here attaches to the uh, underside of the underside of the car so this this little piece right here goes underneath and it goes into a uh, piece of metal and i'm not going to drill the piece of metal to use a wire tie i would rather just use one of these little fasteners under here so this is the reason that i harvest these from places where i can replace them with a wire tie that way i don't have to go through too much trouble trying to drill metal to get a wire tie in there i mean really all you got to do is just go buy some of these but uh, i try to save a dollar when i can and uh, in all honesty these things break over time you wind up replacing them anyway. All right, so here's another thing that I run into all the time. I'm always needing small washers. And most of the time what I do is I'll go to the hardware store or Home Depot and purchase the correct washers. Most of the time these washers cost me 50 cents, 40 cents, a dollar, depending on the size and how many are in the pack. Uh, one thing that you can do if and now I, I, this this may not be uh, legal to do this, but uh, I, I always use pennies. So I'll take a penny and I'll drill the appropriate hole for the penny. And while this sounds like a total rig, it works. It's very inexpensive. And again, I don't know the legality of uh, defacing currency, but I've seen people making jewelry out of coins. And um, I figured that uh, if those videos are, can be posted, uh, I can't see why drilling a small hole and using this as a washer won't work as well. Anyhow, I'm going to drill this and I'll show you how I use them. Okay, so here's the, the drilled penny. 
And then there's my, my little washer. And uh, let me show you why I need these. If you look under here, see if it'll focus. This is what I need them for. See these uh, these little bumper tabs? They have uh, quite a bit of an opening. And unless I have this little washer in here, um, the screw head will just go right through that, that hole because it's too, it's too big. So there you have it. A little hack that I use when I'm in a pinch. If you uh, want to make them look a little nicer, you can always paint them black. Uh, I don't care. Oh, what's interesting too is the the penny used to be made out of copper. It's no longer made out of copper. The shavings of it were silver. So I wouldn't be surprised if all it is is uh, just a little washer. Okay, all done. There it is, guys. So there's the car all repaired. Give a shot over here to the side. Also replace the uh, inner well guards because they uh, one of the sides got damaged. I'm gonna just start it up, make sure everything's okay. And thanks for following me, guys. If you guys wanna. Help me continue making these videos. Please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you have any mechanical questions, go ahead and make a comment and I'll respond as uh, soon as I see it. Have a wonderful weekend. See you guys next time.